this is DIY Hi-Fi Life. On this episode, we talk about how to best set up your Rune server. I give you all the options and uh, show you, I think, the best way to uh, set up your Rune for now and in the future as your music collection grows. Today on DIY Hi-Fi Life. Welcome back. I'm Chris Barker for DIY Hi-Fi Life. I took a bit of a break, as you've noticed, and uh, reconstituted uh, uh, some ideas, and I'm back with, I think we'll call this uh, s Series 2, Season 2 of DIY Hi-Fi Life. I've got some new ideas. I think you'll enjoy them, and I hope that you can uh, stay tuned with me. I appreciate all the... Uh, uh, past subscribers and new subscribers as well and I would appreciate if you like what this content is offering on this channel that you give me a subscribe and a like if you can because it does help me out. So back with you with some uh, new co ideas for um, hi-fi and DIY uh, and living the DIY hi-fi life and on this episode I want to talk to you about um, setting up a rune server. Uh, there are several ways to approach this uh, in, from a DIY perspective, and I'll run over the, the ideas and then uh, kind of point you towards what I think might be the best solution. Um, one of the ways that I think most people get going with Rune uh, is using a personal PC, be it a, a Windows PC, Linux, uh, Apple, Mac, something like that. And that's okay to give it a go and, and, and start out and try it, but I don't think it's really um, the best solution long term for a hi-fi setup where you're more about wanting to listen to music without the distractions of fiddling with computers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think they're kind of uh, opposed to one another. So, and also some of the problems with running Rune on, as a server on your PC or Mac, is you've got a lot of overhead from the operating system, which can kind of bog things down. So it's not, I don't think, really the best solution. It's good to try, but uh, if you're going to really go for it, uh, there's other ways to do it. Another approach would be, of course, to buy the uh, Rune Nucleus server from uh, Rune Labs, and uh, that's a, a very viable option and preferred probably if you wanted just a real plug-and-play option. Basically, uh, the Rune Nucleus service is just an Intel NUC that they've put in a very nice case and uh, maybe tweaked a little bit, but uh, you know that, that that's about what you're buying there. Of course, Rune is very good in that it provides something called the Rock OS, which is what runs on that Nucleus server, and you can download that and run that on various um, hardware platforms. Again, you can set up a dedicated PC or other type of uh, hardware and build your own and do it that way. And that's uh, something that a lot of people do. The, the problem with all of these solutions up until the next one I talk about is that um, it's it kind of limited in certain degrees, uh, either if you're, as I said, if you're running on a, a Windows or Mac OS or Linux OS, you've got the OS overhead. And also, none of these solutions really provide any kind of data management and other options that I'll talk about. And and that's pretty important because, you know, once you've spent a lot of time creating your, your Rune library and getting all the metadata right and all that kind of stuff, you want to be able to back it up and um, access it from other areas and that kind of thing. And none of these other solutions really do a good job. So, what can one do? Well, there's a third option that one can pursue, and that's putting Rune on what's called a, a NAS, a Network Attached Storage Device. And I think uh, over, over the long haul, this is really going to be your best value long term. Uh, you have really unlimited storage options, and you also have data uh, management and backup options that you just don't have any other way. And it, once you get this set up, it's really pretty much something you can treat as a, an appliance and, and, and you know, leave it running 24-7 and really not have to worry about it much. It really doesn't require a lot of maintenance, that kind of thing. So... In this uh, episode, I'm going to show you basically what is required to set up uh, a NAS and uh, describe the components and, and what, you, uh, what, you, what you need to do. And basically, I'm going to run some B-roll while I'm talking, and you can uh, watch along as I basically set up uh, the... Um, the server with uh, Rune uh, uh, running on it. So basically, the, from a hardware standpoint, I purchased a Synology S220 Plus from Amazon. I got a good deal during the Prime Day. It was only $240. This is a two-drive uh, bay 
uh, NAS. So it's your base, very basic NAS, uh, but I think it's more than up to uh, the what we need to you have for running Rune on on such a device. Um, I went ahead and uh, pr purchased a Seagate Ironwolf uh, 12 terabyte hard drive. This is a spinning hard drive, 72 hard, r r 100 RPM. Uh, that was about 289 at the time when I bought that as well. So that that went very well. And then um, when I went ahead and set it up, um, and this is something we can discuss a little bit, is I set it up to run as what's called a JBOD, a, a just a bunch of uh, disks, basically. Uh, I didn't set up a RAID. Uh, I think with the two disks um, uh, NAS, I don't think RAID really buys you that much. And when I took, get to talk about uh, how to back things up, uh, I think that's a better solution than depending on RAID. RAID is used uh, a lot in data centers, that kind of thing, but it, when it goes south, it can really go south, and it can really be a real headache uh, for the uh, you know a average user to maintain and and fix if if, if a disk goes south. So I, I just run the disk just as ordinary disks and have another backup option that I'll talk about. Uh, what I do for that backup option is basically I buy uh, inexpensive uh, five terabyte portable disk drives. Uh, Seagate makes them, Western Digital makes them. Uh, I pick pick them up often from Costco and they're under a hundred bucks sometimes on sale. I just picked up one for I think $94 I think it was on sale and that's a five terabyte so that's uh, a good amount of storage and uh, you just plug it into the USB port on the front of the uh, Synology or NAS that you purchase and there's a uh, sync programs built into the NAS that allow you to back it up. So that makes life uh, very straightforward and I recommend that, that highly and then you can take those discs and you can uh, periodically, put, I put some in my uh, safety deposit box, you could give them to a friend to keep at their house, give them to family, whatever, uh, and just do backups uh, whenever you want to do, swap the disks around. And uh, I think that's a very good solution to uh, then having a really good um, backup solution and uh, not worry about things. Um, now, as far as um, setting up the Synology DAS, it's very straightforward. Everything runs in a uh, web browser. Setting up the uh, Synology NAS is very straightforward. Um, one of the things I also did is I purchased an additional um, four gigabytes of RAM to bring up the RAM total to six gigabytes. That's not absolutely necessary, but uh, it was only 25 bucks, so it was, uh, it was very easy to do. Now, uh, what you need to do as far as setting up the NAS is really quite plug and play. Once you've installed the hard disk and, the, and if, any RAM you might have purchased, you can go ahead and um, plug it into your network. You want to have it hardwired, so you're going to want to put this, uh, you know, where your router is, your that kind of thing, and you in the closet. I keep mine in my utility room in my basement, and uh, then it's accessible via uh, Wi-Fi and my Ethernet all over the house. And um, basically, the setup it couldn't really be easier. It's it's a, a has a graphical user interface uh, using a web browser. So you just uh, once it's uh, booted up to um, your LAN, your network, you go ahead and just uh, uh, type in the IP address and log on, and then you begin the setup process, which may be uh, some updates that you have to download, that kind of thing. And once you get it, everything set up, then. Um, it's very uh, straightforward. Uh, what you will want to do is set up a couple of share points. Uh, one, obviously, for your music. This is so you'll be able to load on to uh, the, the the NAS your your music collection. You can create one for videos and movies if you're going to be doing that. And also, you want to be able to uh, you set up uh, some other shares that uh, that uh, you'll be needing for the actual Rune install. So with all that done, uh, it's uh, really uh, just a matter of minutes uh, to get the basic NAS uh, uh, up, up and running. Okay, continuing on, uh, what you want to do then is... Uh, once you've got the NAS uh, running and your share is set up, uh, you'll want to uh, download uh, from the new Rune NAS OS uh, um, website, uh, which has uh, distributions for all the major NASs, and uh, download the appropriate one for your uh, situation, your NAS. And uh, basically, you just do a manual install. Uh, in in my case on the Synology of this uh, package. It goes very quickly and then once you've got that installed then uh, you uh, launch that and then you log in uh, with your uh, Rune credentials that you've already as, as, that you have for your regular Rune account to set up the uh, 
the Rune server, and that's pretty much just about it. It's probably the simplest way to set up uh, Rune uh, compared to uh, setting up your own uh, Rune with a, uh, on a PC with the Rock OS, which is a little bit more involved, or, or um, a, a, you know, even in Windows and Mac. I don't think it's that much easier there either. either. So then you're really pretty much up and running. Uh, just take care to manu well, follow the directions. In my case, uh, for my Synology NAS, I'm running on the 6X version of the operating system. Uh, I, as of this recording, I think the, um, there's still some compatibility issues with the uh, beta version of the 7 version of uh, the Synology NAS OS. So I would re re recommend staying with the 6 version until you know that the uh, 7 version uh, of NAS uh, for Synology is, 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 is um, compatible. But uh, besides that, then you, you really don't have much worries uh, uh, at all to, uh, to um, worry about. Um, the other thing that's fun and interesting about then having your NAS set up is that you can install a bunch of other programs that you might find useful uh, to complement your Rune install. For example, I would uh, go ahead, because it really doesn't uh, cause much overhead, the Miniman server. This is a UPnP DLNA server that's free to use. There is a paid version as well, but the free one is very capable. And that will provide you with that capability uh, for your NAS, and you can run that in parallel parallel uh, on your uh, NAS server uh, along with Rune. So you can use clients that access that as well. So I would go ahead and run that, install that as well. Um, you might want to also uh, install Plex, another free uh, uh, to use piece of software which uh, also has a paid tier, and um, install that. Uh, I think that's the Plex is a, the next best competitor in some ways to Rune, um, and actually will uh, index your music as well as movies and videos and that kind of thing. And again, you can use the same um, source directory that you have all your media for, you know, covered inside your NAS uh, and, and use that to, uh, as well with Plex at the same time using with Rune. It doesn't, none of these conflict with each other. Uh, there's, you know, some cool software with Plex, such as PlexAmp, which is a, a nice program that runs on your Android or uh, Mac OS uh, or PC or iPhone, uh, which is a, a nice piece of streaming software that you can use as well. And you might want a, you know, a nice complement to Rune. So uh, I would consider looking at installing that. And that's, of course, um, it shows you the flexibility of this uh, network attached storage device in that you can uh, have multiple things running uh, using the same data stores um, and you know you can expand it again if you want to keep all your home movies your your downloaded videos and and TV and all that kind of stuff on this server as well and you're only limited by how much uh, storage you have which is pretty large at this point with these large uh, hard disks I do want to mention uh, just a couple of things that you'll want to be aware of is um, make sure that you um, keep your server secure. Uh, there's been a, a bit of a, a, a blight of uh, ransomware attacks against some of these small NAS servers in recent weeks. Uh, one of the most famous ones is the QLocker one that attacked Q, the QNAP uh, NAS servers. And uh, that's not the only one. I, I've read reports about the, these uh, report ransomware somewhere attacks going against uh, even Synology devices. You'll be in good shape as long as you don't do any port forwarding or open yourself up to the internet and, and basically, you know, practice basic security uh, on, on your, um, your NAS and on your network. You should disable uh, UPnP at the, uh, sur at the router level if that happens to be turned on because that's a good entry point right now for a lot of these attacks. So if, as long as you follow good network hygiene and security, you'll, you'll be okay and don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you do want to open up to, to yourself to the internet, you, you know, Plex ha does have the capability of streaming over the internet, uh, which is very nice. But today, uh, right now, with some of these ransomware attacks, you might want to think twice about that. Uh, just a tip that I would recommend. So. Uh, there you have it. It's really a pretty simple thing to do, uh, and I, I, I really want to make uh, the case that I think f uh, you want to go with a NAS setup for your Rune library. Now, if uh, you decide that the NAS for some reason isn't powerful enough, maybe if you're using a lot of DSP and that kind of thing uh, in Rune, you could, for instance, add a Rune, uh, uh, you know, Intel NUC 
Rock OS install to run Rune and then uh, access the, the, the shared music on your NAS at a later date. So you still have that flexibility. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not clear, and, and, and Rune Labs hasn't really made it really clear where the demarcation and performance bottlenecks of Rune are. I feel uh, modern NASes are more than capable of running uh, Rune, at least from a database standpoint of indexing your, your music. Uh, I, if you get into a lot of the, uh, the DSV functionality of Rune, that may be where some more overhead is needed and where I would then maybe uh, you know, get a separate uh, a Rune NUC to give that a try. Uh, if that's uh, something that you're, you're making heavy use of, but I, you know, that what's good about this solution is you can try it on your NAS, and then if again, if you need more horsepower, you can always add uh, a NUC uh, downstream. So, and it's you know, this is not an expensive proposition. We're talking about I spent less than three hundred bucks for the the NAS itself, and then the uh, adding a, the hard disk was about another three hundred bucks. So we're talking about six hundred dollars all in, and that's going to be a, a solution I think can you can go with for many many years and and be a secure and a solution and, and for all your your data and that kind of thing. So. Uh, that's it for this particular um, episode, a good uh, start for the new season. I've got a bunch of other ones coming up, so you want to stay tuned. I uh, will direct you to look in the uh, area down below at the more information. I've got a bunch of links to uh, all the stuff I've talked about, plus some affiliated links to uh, things on Amazon and some free music and all sorts of things. So if you can try out any of those links, that'll help out this channel as well. And I, and, and I am appreciative of all of you, you viewing this uh, video and, and giving me uh, your feedback as well. So please stay tuned uh, for further episodes, and we're just going to keep on living the DIY hi-fi life. And this is Chris Barker, signing out. Thanks.